bit of late start right there. Turn the volume down a little bit and get into the monologue. Oh, terrible. Well, 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 what a week in sports it has been. The Cavs finally overthrew their tyrannical leaders. Lebronto rolls into, tea, into town and teabags Drake like his name was Earl Grey. The Mets are a complete dumpster fire, and well, that's not even half the stuff we're going to talk about. Speaking of dumpster fires, welcome the Dreamers, the Streamers, the Eiffel Tower Tag Teamers. I'm Five Points, and you're in for a huge show tonight. Before I introduce my compadres... I have a special guest for you tonight. I'm thrilled to have KTO, Carl, Karsten, Carlston, Karsten the Oracle, a huge YouTube channel that does incredible work. On in a little bit, I'll talk about the Cleveland Browns and a little bit about his channel, so definitely stick around for that coming up in just a bit. And uh, real quick, before we get into the show, of course, send the Snapchat, I mean Super Chats. We'll read them all on the air, and if you have any questions for KTO, be sure to get those in now, as this interview will be in the first segment. All right, so co-hosting tonight is sports radio host and harsh criticizer of the Denver Post, TJ Carpenter's with me. What's up, TJ? I, I, sound, I sound like I'm an angry reader, uh, like I'm a 75-year-old man who just sends letters to the editor every week. Yeah, that's, that's your Twitter account is 90% just hate for the Denver Post. Is what I think it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, or other Denver media in general. It's just it's just me hating them for being terrible at their jobs. I did like that they put uh, Lincoln. Well, what's the field in Philly as the as Coors Field uh, and a, as a misprint on their cover? And you were just like, yeah, I, I think you can do a little better than that, right? Like, <laughs> oh my God. When that happened, it was basically the it was it was just a sign of all of the terrible shit that their parent company, which is like this uh, this big hedge fund that uh, has basically stripped the newspaper of all of its parts and is just making it making profit off of it now, just pure profit. And everybody at the newspaper hates it because it's destroyed journalism. Uh, what little of it was left to begin with, but um, yeah, like that's. It's it's just, but like, even if you don't follow sports, you should know what the landmarks in your city look like at the very least, right? You can't make that kind of mistake. Somebody somebody has to get fired for that kind of problem, that yeah. kind of mistake. Yeah, that's it. Said Phillies on the scoreboard, like right. It was in the picture. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> it's pretty terrible. So, um, well, uh, I am. So thrilled here. This is the first segment. It's a real treat for me. Uh, I've been watching this guy for a long time. I'm really shocked he even came on to the dumpster fire. But uh, without further ado, I have KTO uh, on the line. What's going on, man? What's up, dude? How's it going? Yeah, I'm doing great, man. Just live streaming, kicking back. So first thing I got to ask you is you're, everyone that knows about your channel knows that you're a Browns fan. Yeah. What did you think about the Browns drafting Baker Mayfield? You say Baker Mayfield? It cut out. Yeah, yeah. What do, what do you think of the Browns drafting Baker Mayfield? Okay. Well, so I did watch you guys talk about how it's – I'm probably in the minority here. I, I saw you guys talk about it. I actually love the pick. I think it was the right pick for the Browns at number one. I know that a lot of people talked about Saquon, number one. You could got – could have got him at four if you wanted, but I think I think he's the guy. I really do. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think the, you know the only big concern is can he have the mental fortitude to to stay in there and not do anything stupid? Because I think talent wise, he he was talent wise, other than Darnold, you know, n number one. But I don't know, maybe that's the thing. That's what they're looking for in Cleveland, right? That kind of cocky attitude. Well, here's the story that I love after the draft day. You know, when Johnny Manziel got drafted, because everyone loves to make that comparison. When Johnny Manziel got drafted, he was in Vegas partying because, you know, oh, I got drafted. I'm, I'm a cool guy now. So he's partying in Vegas. He doesn't, he doesn't give a shit about, you know, about being on the Browns. He's just, he got money now and he's going to party. Baker Mayfield's asked, hey, are you going to the Cavs game tonight? You know, it's like game seven, big game. It might be LeBron's last game ever in Cleveland. And he's like, I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm playing football right now. I'm, I'm getting snaps under center and stuff. So 
I just think the mentality going in is he wants to be great, whereas Manziel, he didn't care about that. He liked football, but he loved the spotlight more than football, and I, I don't think Baker does. I think he's a team guy, and I think he's going to be great. I think the fans are going to love him. I think he gets a couple wins under his belt. He, he brings that kind of swagger to the field, and I think everyone's going to love him. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, how, how many wins do you think they'll get next year? I want to hear this from a Cleveland fan because we, we've been just – we've been rough on Cleveland for a <laughs> I while. I know you have. Well, okay, so I play the schedule game every single year. That's just what you do as a fan. And unfortunately for me, I'm wrong 100% of the time because last year I gave them at least like six wins <laughs> and they got none. So – I, I looked over the schedule a bunch of times and I sat here and I really, I really thought about it. Cause I don't want to be this, this fan that just, Oh, my team's going to win 10 games. We're going to the playoffs. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie. I think if the Browns get a hot start, they somehow beat the Steelers in week one, which they haven't won their first game to start a season in like 12 years or something. If they start hot, I think they can win seven to nine games. And I'm not even, I, I, I truly believe they can make a, a, Still like a Cinderella type of run, nine and seven to the wild card. I think they can, but right. so more realistically, uh, I'm thinking six and ten. Right. Okay, so that's your realistic. Okay, you're saying they can. That's my realistic. Win. That's my realistic. Right. Six okay. and ten. So I was gonna say if you if you were going with nine, I was gonna subtract six because last year <laughs> went with six. Yeah, that's that's probably a good. Uh, and way to, so let's put it at estimate. three as the over under right there. Well, okay. Here's the thing. So. You know, everyone can make their jokes about the Browns last year going 0-16, but in about half of those games, they either had a chance to win or they should have won the game. And, at, and they were in the game for about, you know, 8 to 10 games. And a lot of the time, Deshaun Kaiser, I mean, he was – obviously he's a rookie, but it was it was really bad. He, he blew some leads. He blew some fourth quarter, like, drives, overtime, interceptions – and I think if they would have had a guy like Tyrod with just last year's team, any any average NFL starter, any guy in the, from, you know, you could say that he's a mid-level starter. I think they would have won four games last year. And so I think the team's better now offensively and defensively. I think Todd Haley's a better offensive coordinator than Hugh Jackson will ever be, for the Browns at least. And I think with all – yeah, like I'm saying, all the pieces that have been brought in and and all that with – it doesn't really matter who's that quarterback. I think they're going to win six games. That's my call. Yeah, I, I, I'm not hot on Todd Haley, just not because of his football mind, just because he's a fucking asshole. That's. Yeah, I, I mean, I respect that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, what What's the temperature among the Brown, other Browns fans? You know, like, what, how, y'all feeling optimistic? Like, is this the first time you've had actual hope in a while, or is it the same, like, every year, just – Here's the thing. Browns fans are dumbasses, okay? I'm, I'm not even kidding. It, it's a complete joke because they will show a six-second clip, okay? Six seconds of, of day one of rookie OTAs minicamp. It's one play from their first practice, and it'll be like a, a sluggo that he burnt the corner, and it was Denzel Ward. And everyone's like, oh, bust. This guy's trash. Whatever you want to say about Denzel Ward from one play. Right. And all the comments are lighting up about how we should have drafted this guy or whatever. And I think I think it's a joke. I think the fan base turns on guys way too fast because of the history that the team is. I mean, I some of it's warranted, but at the same time, they don't they don't even give a guy a chance. If he makes a great play, he's the, the second coming of Christ. And if he messes up, he's he's all time bust. Yeah, that's, it's I funny. Think, it's funny yeah. how with a smaller fan base, they do kind of start to generate a hive mind. Like me, I'm a Giants fan. Like there's fans like that everywhere, but you can kind of run. There's so many Giants fans that you can run in the – like I'm a miserable Giants fan. Like I just hate <laughs> my life and I hate the Giants. But you'll find somebody that, that just – Hey, you've won Super Bowls. Okay, don't <laughs> right. talk. Don't right. get to say you're miserable. Okay, you've been to the playoffs. Have in the last ever, 15 years. Have you ever watched – uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, That's okay. Have you ever watched the SB Nation video by John Bo- – I, I don't even know how to say his name. Cleveland is hell. Have you ever seen that? Uh, unfortunately, I've seen it like four times just because I like – it makes – it brings the miserable out of me. So I, I will watch it. I think it's going to be like a tradition now where I watch it before opening day. <laughs> so then the year that we actually get good, it's going to mean so much more. You know right. what I mean? 
Watch the Factory of Sadness video. Watch that one, and then the Cleveland tourism video, and you're good to go. <laughs> well, the on the opposite side of that, I watch Draft Day every single <laughs> Draft Day, every single. Day one of the draft, I watched that movie. I've been doing it since it came out. Wow, you're a ritual-based man. So um, I want to talk about a little bit about your YouTube channel itself. Um, it, guys, if anybody is on and you aren't subscribed to KTO and you live under a rock, like go over there, subscribe to him, and then come back. <laughs> um, I think the one thing that I've noticed about your channel is that you really know how to tell a story. And I think you follow the the formula that is really successful is that you you have a setup, a conflict, and a resolution. That's just that's how it's done. Um, how do you pick a topic or a story? Like how do you come up with these original um, subjects to to put on your channel? Well, first of all, thank you. I, I really appreciate the compliment. Um, but as far as video ideas, I have a list on my phone of. <laughs> hundreds of concepts they're not even videos they're just kind of concepts something that kind of is interesting to me that's not necessarily like a video idea like just for instance there's like a this is just something i probably will never use for a video but there was this guy who tried to show up to uh he got picked up by the saints in like the 80s on saturday and he had to show up to the game on sunday and when he got off the plane he couldn't find the stadium for whatever i don't know how <laughs> But he couldn't find, uh, you know, New Orleans Stadium, so he just didn't show up. And after the game, the coach called me. He's like, "You're out. Of, like, don't even come in on Monday." And then he was gone. But just like something like that, it's just so so weird. It, it brings like a. I, I want to know more. Like, how is that not like? How do people not know that? It's such a weird, dumb story. Yeah, but, I think that's awesome. But I don't know if you can you make it into a seven minute video. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. So. So that's not really like a video concept. What happens is I'm doing research for one video and something else will come up. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I'll click on it and it won't have much. It won't, it, it won't have much online about it. There's no videos about it. There's a couple of articles and I'll just be really intrigued by the idea. And so I'll just kind of go off and run in with it. Oh, don't don't pay attention to the background. I think Tree just stumbled into the. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what's going on. Yeah, uh -huh. it's like a world of shop. Yeah, no worries. Sorry, uh, KTO meet urinating Tree. I think he's drunk as shit somewhere. <laughs> no, I'm not drunk. I'm actually okay right now. Oh, all right. Walking around the Baltimore Strip, nothing right. crazy. Let, let me wrap up this interview with uh, KTO, and then uh, I'll get to your lamenting here in just a little all right. bit. All right, sorry, how's it going, Tree? All right, man. Yeah, man. We're Sorry forming, for barging it. It's all good. Ultron. TJ's in the corner just like, yeah, well, y'all shut the hell up so I can talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know when I'm supposed to uh, chime in. I wanted to uh, get what uh, KTO, uh, get KTO's opinion on John Dorsey because uh, I have some thoughts. On, okay. uh, yeah, I'd like Mr. to hear that too. Sorry. I, I like, I like um, that he sticks to what he believes in. I don't think he feels the pressure from – the management, the owner, or the fans. I think he went with what he believes is the guy, and I think he did that before. I mean, his track record of picking Pat Mahomes and then him becoming the guy, and then picking Tyree Kill, even though the fan base was super pissed about that. I think he rolls with what he thinks is right, and at least from an attitude standpoint, whether or not these guys work out, I, I just like the kind of mentality that he brings to the table. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because uh, I, I covered John Dorsey when he was in Kansas City. And uh, the, the thing that's always I, – I was I was convinced the first year and a half of covering him in Kansas City Whoa. that he was basically like Kaiser Soze because he could – he would just go out to the media and act like a total idiot and like not <laughs> – he wouldn't be able to answer questions. He was incoherent. He would just babble on about nonsense. Uh, and there, it was just, it was, he was terrible, but then, you know, they'd win a bunch of games and everybody was really happy and they were, they turned over the bottom half of the roster. And by the end of it, I was, I was questioning whether or not he was actually terrible or good. I couldn't tell. Uh, but by the end of it, it was, you would, you basically had seen a roster in KC that they'd won a lot of games, but he had totally fucked them in the cap. So, and a lot of it, I, my criticisms of him is not, are not like, his, the results of of what yeah. he's done to this point it has more to do with his process i don't, I don't like i don't necessarily respect the uh 
the the football old school like I'm not gonna buy into metrics or or really you know pay attention to you know what other innovative teams are doing or change. I'm just gonna go out and watch some film and then whatever my gut tells me, that's what I'm gonna go with. Uh, I, I just feel like that limits you as an organization if you, if you dictate all the decision making to that fun. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, I, I don't know what how much of what they say to the media is actually what they do. I don't know. I guess only time will tell if, you know, he runs – he has unlimited cap right now, it seems like. So if he runs that into the ground in the next three years, then I'll probably agree with you. I, I mean, until then, I guess I'm a results guy. And if he brings the Browns to the playoffs, I'm going to be forever grateful. So. Boy, that's, that's a tough <laughs> gig that's, right that's there. That's kind of where I'm sitting at. That's a tough well, game. Being, being, I mean, it's now. I mean, the Bengals are still like treading water, and yeah, exactly. They're doing nothing. The Ravens have been like, eh, they might do something with Lamar Jackson. Not. I feel like the Steelers are due for a downfall yeah, in the near future. I, totally agree. I, I think like, they that they they're, they're due for an implosion. If, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the gap that the Browns can not dominate the AFC North, but at least contend, and it's not a shock. I think that's coming up really soon. Yeah, that wave's coming. Yeah, by the way, it's a tough it's gig to be a results guy in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the worst gig. I think that's the worst it's gig It's terrible. Have. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> at least we got the Cavs. All right, I got I got one a couple more questions on the YouTube channel. Then I want to get to Tree Salt because of the pens losing. But uh, no. who's your who's your biggest YouTube influences? Well, you said it earlier. You were talking about John Boyce or John Boyce, however you pronounce it. Yeah. The way that he structured his videos, the way that he told the story, like you were explaining about my stuff. I just I really was intrigued by it. It really, really appealed to me. And along with him. Uh, this is kind of different, but Chris Smooth, the, the yeah, 2K YouTuber, yeah. he was a big reason why I wanted to get into YouTube originally. And then I don't know if you've heard of this guy, but Angry Video Game Nerd. I don't yeah. know about that. was one of my old influences back in the day. Holy was shit. he so on Channel I Awesome? I love the way. Wait, say that again? Was he part of Channel Awesome? In, no, in, no, no, no. He was um 2007. Like he back in yeah, 2006, he started out. I, I remember him. That was when I like. Started, it, it was a different yeah, yeah, it was he, different. He did but Ikari Warriors, way that, and he beat the game, the, and yeah, I was impressed exactly. by that. Just the effort that he put into his videos. He would, I mean, dedicate a month to putting together this 20 minute like masterpiece, and then he made a video about how he put it together. And it's like I studied that thing. Like it was, you know. One of my major classes. I mean, I just, I just took apart what he said and kind of translated it to what how I make my videos. Almost, not quite, but some of the the ways he did his stuff. So I think those are my top three uh, influences. Yeah. If I had someone for how I make my videos, it would just be someone spraying shit onto a wall and just <laughs> <laughs> calling it a video. <laughs> but, um, all right. Uh, how about this? Let's read a couple of Snapchats because the crowd is waiting. And then I'll get to Tree. All right. Sean Z, Buck99, love KTO and the pens suck. I think Tree will agree with you. Dr. Doom says Yinzer mode deactivated, but now Tree's here and we're about to get it activated. And then Philip <laughs> Buxton, big fan of the show. I got a joke. What do the Penguins and Steelers have in common? They both choke in the playoffs. That's unfair. <laughs> That's just I mean, unfair. both losing the second round. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, Penn's actually won. The Steelers, Penn's didn't underachieve for two years. All right, Tree, just lay it on me. Let's let's go with the <laughs> song. Let's go. I mean, Are you in public I right don't know now? How to really feel like I've been able to decompress and chill for a little bit. Once I knew they blew game five, I knew they were done. Because like, I'm sorry, Chris Latang sucks. He is bad. Like you're paying him seven and a half million for four more years with a no movement clause. I, I cried in the corner. <laughs> Hopefully we can ship him off to Montreal. Is he be, is know, he from that area? Oh, Mark Rosenbaum loves his French Canadians. Yeah, yeah, French Canadians. But uh, yeah, the, the thing I'm gonna miss the most are the memes because they they were comforting. They were like the old reliable. They were stale and outdated. But <laughs> I'm gonna miss them. Like I I cried for about. A couple minutes because those memes are gone. I know. And, uh, 
I know. I just I wanted to post I love those memes, damn it. Yeah, I wanted Alex on a golf course. We still have next we have we have the lightning. We have the lightning. Well to be fair, like I mean they're still in the third round and I mean I really like the lightning. But at, at the end of the day, you have to admit the Caps were the better team. So I can really say, like the van- the depth vanished on the pens. Like Phil Kessel played like shit. Apparently he was injured. Broussard played like shit. I have no idea why he liked him in New York. He was terrible here. Um, the pens D was a- has been an issue all year. Are you and crying? and it was exposed. Like how many two on ones can you give up in a series? Right, right. Like come on, like. Literally, they would always be goals at the end of periods or the beginning of periods. I, I and they always like, break down for like the weirdest reasons. It it was bad. It was bad. I mean, it was embarrassing. I feel at the like, end of the day, like the caps didn't screw up. That's all you have to say. Mm-hmm. They did not screw. Up. And that was the difference in the series. Yeah, they pulled a Ralphie, and they finally started beating the shit out of Scott Farkas. That's what happened. They just they had enough. That's what it was. Yeah, well, unfortunately, it's inevitable. I mean, if you look back in the 80s, like the Blackhawks always beat the shit out of the Blues, and now I think they've won, like, what, two, three, or three or four series since? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's bad. That's what do you think the Pens do now what? besides ship Latang off? I don't know if they could even ship him off. Like, overhauling. Like, they need to overhaul the D. They need, like a bit thin the depth needs to ship off like it's like on coon hockle should be gone sherry should be gone um only mata i think his time's up i think he's well, like a west coast system because he's too slow yeah you, and, and the older guys even what's the name cole was old but he was he was fast Ian cole yeah he oh. like had sort of a falling out with the team you know, I, I, I'd expect and I know, you to. Like, sorry, I just, I, I expected you to be more angry. You sound more sad than angry. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, like he, his time was up, and uh, he got replaced adequately by Alexiak. If you think about hindsight, like the off season for the Pens really blew up in their faces. Like, you can't blame Jr. for you know Hunwick because he looked like a decent fit at the time. You can't blame him for. Like uh, um, Derek Brassard, you can't blame him for like who else was a big signing? Like, um, shoot, um, I forget. I forget who else they signed. But like a couple others, but like, like the Reeves, they, the Reeves trade I've always had an issue with because like they went past their core identity. Like they chose to get a bruiser that never fit, and you gave up a premium draft pick. and Sunfist, which I mean, thank God he never panned out. But, like, I felt like that wasn't a good trade in the time. And now, uh, in the future, it still hasn't panned up. And now the guy you drafted with that pick you got from St. Louis, like, he's been injured all year and looks like shit. So, it's like. I, I think this could be the downturn for the Pens, like, just like the Stillers. Like, to be fair, I felt like it was going to happen three years ago. So, squeeze two cups they're into out. some bad contracts right now. Like, Latang's looking like a rough contract. Kessel's in under contract for a good bit. I mean, Crosby and Malkin are on the wrong side of 30 now. Yeah. Malkin looked old or is getting old. Malkin just looked like he was on half speed the whole time. And I mean, he did have a leg injury, so I will give him that. But he just looked like very, like, you know, very like you know, lethargic in the way he moved, and I think that had more to do with injury or something. The whole Penn's team looked lethargic. They did. Like We're... game six, they looked like sh- they looked sluggish, and I have no idea how. You know what I love about when when a team season ends is when they release the injury report and you find out that yeah. like some guy was playing with a compound fracture in every single bone in his body, and you're just like, yeah, oh. there were a lot of injuries for the Pens. Like Kessel was injured. We all knew that. He should have really rested during the season, but, you know, he was stubborn because of my Iron Man streak. And that hurt them in the long run because Kessel was always their X Factor the last two years. Yeah. Apparently, Broussard was injured too. Uh, Kuhn Hockel was apparently injured. Crosby was like, had a minor injury. Yeah. I wonder bad. which bit Latang was injured, but he was. And I think he's just injured because he's an idiot on the head. He has like a 10 cent brain. 
Well, everyone, every, if you're not hurt in the playoffs, you're not you're not playing playoff hockey. So you know. Do uh, do you guys want to see that change? If because if they if they had to release more information about the injuries, they would have to they 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 wouldn't be able to play as many guys the way they do. Uh, some people, but some people like don't give a shit. You know, they're like, well, you know, they're getting paid a lot of money. So who, who well, cares? at the end of the day, like the way they like treat injuries in hockey, like anything's either like an upper body injury or lower body injury. We don't <laughs> yeah, know what an upper true. body injury is. It could be like, you know, a shoulder injury. It could be an amputation. It could be like a severance. Like that could a a, anything is could be an upper body. In- <laughs> you yes, know, like the uh, black knight, like both his legs cut off. That's considered a lower body injury in hockey. That's right. <laughs> right. He gets cast. It's but a flesh wound in hockey. Just a flesh yes. wound. Just a flesh wound. You can still skate. Yeah. Come on. Well, I, th- I think injuries do play a much bigger part in hockey than other sports because, yeah, if you know a guy's ankle is bothering, you can slash him on the ankle and just be like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck that, bitch. All right, Tree. <laughs> Are, are you, do you have enough out? Are you, is it, was that cathartic? Uh, like, as I said, like I'm at a point where at least I'm at peace. I can actually watch hockey as a fan of the game instead of, you know, having a heart attack every fucking night, like the pens did for the last two years. But, uh, dude, you guys won I mean, the cup two years in a row. I don't think you, yeah, can really I know, complain. but it, it, they were very, like, it was very tense for those two years. The last time the Rangers <laughs> won a cup, I, I was in high school. Oh, shit. Uh, well, if you remember, like, Penn's caps for both those years were coin flips. Penn's lightning was a coin flip that year. Uh, Penn's preds was had some, like, coin flip moments, too. Mm-hmm. So it's not like it was just, like, stomp through everyone and just roll through. There were some tense moments there. Yeah, yeah. I still get nightmares about, I, about Gronk catching that pass from – Brady, I still believe that it happens sometimes. I wake up in a cold sweat and I remember shit. All right. If you want to go enjoy your vacation or if you want to stick around, either way, we're going to. I might pop in a little bit later. All right. I'm probably going to sit back and try and enjoy the uh, the, uh, nightlife. Do a couple of Jaeger bombs. And a cost of female. Jaeger bombs? No, I fucking hate Jaeger bombs. It tastes (laughs) like shit. (laughs) Goldschlager? Goldschlager? The cinnamon schnapps? Yeah, no. yeah. I just, I want you to come out in Baltimore. That's what I want you to do. Drink a bunch Come of out in Baltimore. Uh-huh. That's, uh, that has some uh, very weird indignations, especially as a Pittsburgher. I think that would kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> ah, come on. Baltimore is a liberal It's like town, I'm in the closet man. here. It's like, no, no, I do not belong to a, a certain uh, uh, city in Pennsylvania. You, you, can, you can go away. I, yeah, I think if you, you should, why aren't you wearing your Heinz Ward jersey? Around town, Heinz Ward. No, yeah. I, I really should be wearing my. Uh... Karsten, if you were in Baltimore, what jersey would you wear to trigger b- people in Baltimore? Uh, I don't know, Ray Rice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably say maybe Ray That's Lewis hilarious. and like, kill the guy. Like that would do it all the time. Just like, why are you wearing that Ray Rice jersey? Like you smartass. Yes. I am. <laughs> and then with a Cleveland hat, too, would be even better. There you go. Yeah, I like nice that. combo. Could you wear, like, a uh, John Elway Colts jersey? Would they even make that for you? Or they just, like... I don't think they'd even, like... What about a uh, Eli Manning, Manning Chargers? <laughs> You'd have to know your history to understand that one. Yeah, not a lot do. Yeah. That yeah, would, like, that would... I mean, like, if you wanted to trigger them, just run around in a Mayflower truck. Once again, nobody <laughs> would get it. <laughs> I think it would be funny to walk around San Diego in an, in an Eli Manning Chargers jersey and just get the shit kicked out of you. Like, <laughs> No, actually, what you need to do is just like wear like something that says, I love Spanos, and then you get your ass kicked repeatedly. <laughs> walk around St. Louis with like a crunky hairpiece and a mustache. And, and to be honest, you should get your ass kicked if you're wearing an I Heart Spanos shirt. Right, in any city. Like, what a dick. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll go meet some ladies, Tree. Uh, we'll let's, see, man. Let's get through these dick, dick pic Snapchats. All right, Philip Buxton, don't worry. I'm drinking my sorrows with the Bruins' loss. Of course. You can blame the refs. Them. Don't worry, man. That's what everyone in Boston's doing. That's right. Uh, Spencer Young, big fan of the show. Big fan of you, Spencer. I guess my Lightning Knights meme prediction is still panning out. As a Minnesota sports fan, I don't know what to do with this success. Well, there's not much... 
actual sports success in Minnesota is there. So you're happy. Over well, I think league. everyone like rooted, rooted for the Capitals. I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. the Pens were the villains of the league. <laughs> Randall Gavin. And there's like, it's oh, as much as like, I feel bad about no one's going to give a shit about me. It's like, whatever. Yeah. You're the, you're the Patriots of the league. Basically. Uh, let's see. Randall Gavin, tree, stay away from the lightning. Do not pick the lightning. Okay. I'm going to pick the lightning. And then Philip Buxton for 10 bucks. Tree, cheers to the Penguins and my Bruins. And look at the bright side. We both have players we like on the Golden Knights. So let's keep rooting for them again. Cheers. Right. So you have Oscar Lindbergh. Oh, well. Oscar Lindbergh, yeah. Lindbergh, yeah. I mean, there's like a sect in Pittsburgh that like is just like has a massive boner for Marc Andre Fleury. And they'll be like, oh, my God, I want him to win the cup just because. But it's like a Vegas cup wouldn't be that good for hockey because, like, everyone would, like – because, like, you would just be slapping the face of every team that's had, like, a hard time. You think it cheapens the expansion draft if they win a cup? I think – I don't have an issue with how they did the expansion draft. The issue was, like, the GMs were such idiots in the past that they just offloaded all their bad contracts onto Vegas. And it's like, oh, here, have our really fucking terrible contract. And then they'll give you a first-round pick for him. Or like that Florida's case, like they gave like a bloated contract for Jonathan Marchessault, their best mm-hmm. scorer. Yeah, they, they basically let Vegas have a pick of all the top free agents. Yep, Minnesota had a really tough choice, too. And mm-hmm. that's why they were in a rough situation. Like they lost two really solid fours that really could have helped them come playoff time yeah. to save their defense. I'm sure KTO is just loving this. He he referred to hockey as hockey ball earlier before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know a lot about the hockey ball. Yeah. It's hey, nothing wrong with a good old hockey ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I used to play in my backyard with like roller blades, whatever that kind of hockey's called. Oh, street um, hockey? No, I play go. street hockey all the time. When I was a all right, I'm going to go way back on you guys. Did you ever see this movie called Airborne? Airborne? Oh, no. Yes. It's set, I believe, in Cleveland or Cincinnati. And this this kid is like, he wants to be the rollerblading god of Cleveland. <laughs> and it's so terrible, but every time it comes on, I have to watch it, like, all the way through. It's, Never even heard uh, of it. Yeah, it's really I bad. think I'm actually one worse than KTO because uh, the, my, the most hockey experience I ever got was, like, in elementary school, in, like, gym class, where they would just give you sticks and a ball, like, right in the middle of the gym, oh, and they would go. just, you know, like, let you out there. Not even, like, the hockey sticks don't even have heads to them. They're just sticks. <laughs> You're just, and then these kids just end up just, like, hitting each other for 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's really about it. That's how elementary school was. Uh, <laughs> where you guys grew up, yeah. I was in the... I was in all the smart kid classes. We had to run from those kids. That's what we <laughs> yeah. They 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 took those sticks and tried to hit you with them. That's right. And then you be, <laughs> then it was true. I did become their boss. Like later. That's awesome. Um, yep. And that's why you get to roll on them with money and bitches, right? That's right. These YouTube dollars are just paying <laughs> out the ass. Let me you know, I you. think the cool kids call them YouTube shekels. I think that's the term. <laughs> shekels. shekels. <laughs> that's right. All right. So we got a lot to talk about here. I'm glad that Karsten stick, stuck sticked around. That's that's sticked around. gifted and talented right there. Uh, the NBA playoffs have been really good. I mean, as far as I mean, yeah, you got the 04 sweep, but how did the Cavs go from looking awful to a team poised to get back to the finals? Like it, it seemed because like a LeBron James. Lady. That's why. Like he's the only reason that team is not a 20 win team. Well, I think LeBron's been playing well the whole time. I think it's just the guys around him finally did something. Yeah, well, I mean, gonna... Kevin Love managed to show up. Yeah, yeah Kevin, Kevin Love. Love on, like, he, he was doing like two points, and now he's putting up 20. That's a huge difference. <laughs> difference. And uh, Cleveland owns Toronto. Like, Toronto, like, uh, there are people that want to say, like, Toronto's going to make noise and make this crazy. They do, they do that shit every year. They always bow down to, like, <laughs> the best team. They've lost 12 in a row to the Cavs in the playoffs. That's not a coincidence. Right? So, like, uh, I mean, it's just their natural Canadian submissiveness, right? They're just naturally inclined to bow down mm-hmm. to the crown. Yeah, yeah so, they, exactly. They just, like, they, they, they took on the Maple Leafs torch of failure. And it's like, okay, here. Bow down to, like, instead of Boston, it's Cleveland. Right. 
It did. It like I, I do think it is amazing how it has worked out for LeBron that it, it's actually getting easier for him every round he goes through the playoffs. Well, um, if they face Boston, like they're battered shit. Right? Yeah, their three best players are out. Yeah, the stars yeah. are aligning once again for the Cleveland. Boston may win son. two games, but unfortunately, that might be it. It's yeah. Like, jeez, and it's probably going to be Warriors Cavs again. Unfortunately. Yeah, I think no. I think I, Houston. I, I, I still don't trust Houston in the clutch. They still have like a lot of holes in their system. Like they're very running gun, but they're like, and still like sketchy on them. It's James Harden, man. Like he's not that good. I mean, he's great, but not in the playoffs. And uh, he's I've, been okay so far. Like he hasn't vanished. I actually have a video on that coming out right after this stream called "Regular mm-hmm. Great in the Regular Season, Shit in the Postseason. That's what I'm going to title it, I think. <laughs> I, think. I, I believe James Harden to be a scourge on the sanctity of basketball. Why is that? It's so infuriating. I can't even – it's so it's hard for me to watch. I was hoping that they would get, a, get rid of all that stupid foul shit in the playoffs because they you have to actually play defense in the playoffs but he only plays half court like it's just like offense he gives everything defense like me i'm here i just like shoot a free over i was like okay i don't think you could pair two more players more alike for each other than chris paul and james harden like they were made for cp3 made the third round for the first time too so it's like a lot of crazy shit has happened this year yeah yeah it's, it's getting in there. sports. I mean, yeah, this could be the year <laughs> where Cleveland, you know, wins eight, 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 nine games. The Browns, 10, 10. All right, so the okay. Browns make the playoffs. That would be another huge thing. Like I actually, the Bills making the playoffs. I might, I might come out with if in my preseason preview, I might say the Browns make the playoffs. I might. Wait, if, if Tyrod leads the Browns to the playoffs the year after he led Buffalo to the playoffs for the first time in however many years, almost 20 years. What are they going to say about Tyrod Taylor after that? If he's well, they're probably going to bench him in week 17 because that always happens to Tyrod. They always find a way to fuck over that poor guy. <laughs> Nathan Peterman. May- Mayfield's not throwing five picks in the first half, though. It's just not happening. Oh, hey, Yeah, Robert. and then they put him back in in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of sticking with, uh, with Joe Thomas on this one. He looked at that situation and said, there is no conceivable way that they could make this team good enough to make it worth my time to come back. I'm peace out. See you right. guys later. I think so, the uh, moment that he started doing a podcast and it was actually more fun than playing for Cleveland, I think he was, okay, I'm out of here. This is actually enjoyable. I, I like that. Oh, it's 930. So what if, what if Joe Thomas like comes back mid-year? What if he misses the field? And is oh, like, that, he's already like 50 pounds under his plane weight or something. So I don't know. <laughs> I, I would hope so. Gourmet. Yeah, he's done. He's so dumb. Yeah, he, there's no way. Right. Even if he came back, like, what difference would he make? You know? That's one of those things about, like, offensive linemen when they retire. It's so interesting because you, you see him one year after, and they were, like, 80 to 100 pounds lighter than their playing weight. They look so much different. It's just – it's weird. So I worked with a guy that he was uh, – Philip Rivers starting um, center. And when he played, he looked like Chris the from Family Guy, the kid. Like he did. <laughs> and, That's a terrible way to look for anyone. <laughs> right, right. But the, so the strength trainer for NC State was CJ Jones, the guy that got busted for every steroid ever, or Marion Jones' husband. And my buddy told me, he was like, Yeah, I didn't know what was going into me, but I just, I didn't question it. You know, when I, when I got there, I was 220. And when I left, I was 325, is what he said. And he he just didn't question it. Now, he broke his leg backwards two times in a row on the first game of the season, two seasons in a row. It's crazy. Jeez. But his walk-around weight after football was like 215, 220. Like, I was wow. like, holy crap, you look like a normal dude. Not Chris from, hey there, sonny boy. So how's it going? Um <laughs> All right, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm. I think it's gonna be a sad, sad show when, uh, when the, it's Lakers or um, Warriors, Cavs again. I just really think it, it's gonna be a dull, 
finals. Yeah, especially if they win in like five games. Yeah, I don't yeah. think LeBron gets past the Warriors. That's where the buck stops. And then and then you'll get the constant uh, debates. Now, I want to ask you this, Karsten. Is he around town in Cleveland? Is he nicer than he was the first time around now? Wait, say that again. Sorry, I cut out. So is LeBron nicer around town in Cleveland than he was the first time around? Because I heard he uh, was a major dick the first time. You know, I... I... I've never even been to Cleveland, so oh. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm the right guy to ask. But I think so. I mean, I think he's more uh, involved in the community as that pizza business. And, yeah, I mean, I think so he's So you volunteered more of a to be now. a Cleveland fan. Yeah. Why, who wouldn't do that? What do you mean? Yeah. Amazing. That is astonishing. I want to study you for science. <laughs> we want to put your head in one of those vials. And put it on. This guy <laughs> chose to be a Cleveland fan. He's the only one. I just, I just saw what they were doing, and I wanted to be a part of it. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> I have a friend that uh, his dad bought his him an Arizona Cardinals jersey, and his brother like a Steelers jersey. And he just, he was like, "All right, this is my squad." Like <laughs> from that wow. one jersey, and I was like, "Ah, oh, man, that's that's wow. tough luck right there, bud." <laughs> mm. Why did you do that? Oh, so you're, I mean, Cleveland is an interesting city to me. I've, I've been there a couple of times. It's amazing how easy you can get downtown. Like you just drop off and you're like right in the middle of downtown. Like there's, it's, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird town. Anyways. Um, <clears throat> speaking of towns, TJ, what's the local scoop on Denver, man? What's going on out there? Man, uh, Denver, uh, I think as a city, we're doing great, right? Uh, everything's hunky-dory. It's 80 degrees today. Beautiful. Uh, sports, on the other hand, is uh, total shit uh, right now. Um, basically because the Denver Broncos have decided that um, John Elway is the grand poobah of all things Broncos, so whatever he says goes. And what you've seen is like this really weird um, like power funnel where every decision has to go through John Elway now, but he never really takes any sort of responsibility for anything that he does. So he just ends up firing some lesser than, and everybody just kind of moves on. And that's how it's been for about 18 months. And I think by the end of last season, people were pretty much fed up with it. So you saw you started to finally see some backlash against John Elway, which is, uh, which is amazing. It's like, it's like if people turned on Jesus at the end. They were like, yeah, I don't know, I'm not so sure. Not so sure about this thing, the whole thing anymore. Jesus. Sounds like sacrament uh, here. I think he's tapping into the stream and listening. It, in yeah, it, it, it's just unbelievable where he, uh, where, where he's, he's taken his, you know, mythology. But, um, like, they're going to have to get to a point to where they, they accept their, their plot right now in the NFL, which is rebuilding. They have to rebuild their roster. They can't act like they can do it in two years. He's going to try and just, you know, waste case Keesum for two years and try to draft another quarterback. But I don't know if it's going to work because he's so bad at drafting. Everybody thinks they had a good draft because they got Bradley Chubb, which I think he's going to be a good player. But the, the, the end, you know, his history is at drafting would indicate that most of the players they picked this year are going to suck. They're not only going to be bad, they're going to like, have like have the opposite effect. Not only will they not be good, they will directly hurt the team in some way, like Isaiah McKenzie did last year. Mm -hmm. He they drafted that guy to be their number one punt returner right away, and he he basically lost them four games by himself last season. Yeah. So that's where they're at. That's how things are going in Denver right now. Oh man, sounds like I mean yeah. The thing with Elway is like the one thing that he did was he got gifted Peyton Manning with a defense that was pretty much already built for him and yeah that's and he won a super bowl so right um, so it's it's like can you fault a guy for winning a super bowl for getting john l or for getting peyton manning because that's a really it, give you have to give him credit for that he got peyton manning that's your job who do you hire who do you fire and who do you acquire and if you acquire peyton manning then you're good at your job but now you know like you got to do the next thing what's next Who's the next guy that's going to save the franchise? You have to find that person and, and convince them to play for your team. And I don't know if if he's got another one in him after Peyton Manning. Like, who who would be the next, like, for sure thing target he could go after? The other Manning. Like, 
Aaron Rodgers? Is Aaron Rodgers going to leave Green Bay no. in two years and come to Denver? Like, that's no. insane. No. But then again, it happened with Peyton Manning, so who knows? Well, his neck guard also fell off, so that that happened. His head literally fell off of his, of his neck. <laughs> <laughs> they just taped it back on. Just yeah. <laughs> throw some duct tape on there, some surgery tape. All right, let's get to some super chats. Uh, Century... Uh, opinions on Elias Peterson, L.A. Tolvanen, and other prospects not playing in the NHL yet, but are drafted. Uh, that's tough asking this group. I think if Sri was paying attention, he'd give you an opinion on that. Good. Um, also, is Benning good or bad? He re-signed Goodbranson, but did really well at the 2017 draft. Benning is the GM for what squad? I don't know. Sorry, I'm not that deep into uh, the roster moves. Of, um, I don't know. Why did you already look it up? I don't know. Tree. Hayden Dale, have you talked about LeBron sweeping the Raptors? Yes, we did. Thank you. Mustard Bus, I just got home from work. Did I miss anything spectacular? Only my ugly face. Uh, Southie 98, how long do you think will it take for the Mets to rebuild and get back into contention? Maybe next month. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, they started out hot and screwed up. But, yeah. So, did you guys hear what the Mets did today? They batted out of order in the first inning. And it cost them an out. <laughs> and they lost by a run. That's terrible. It's the worst thing I've ever heard of. Uh, Ryan Brannigan, Rick Nash better be on that list. Five points. Nash is going to stay in Boston. Uh, Motown's great at... Greatest, it's Boston and Los Angeles all over again. Yeah, I, I believe it's kind of rigged. And then Mustard Bus, do you believe Cam Newton can bring the Lombardi to the Carolinas? Or will you be continue to be disappointed? I think um, I think you missed your shot in that Super Bowl. Send six of them to you still. I don't know. What do you guys think about can Cam Newton win the big one in North Carolina? Are we dead? Is the stream dead? What the hell's going on? Hello? Yeah. You guys there? Yeah. Did you hear me? There's a lot of background noise. But, yeah. Uh, yeah should I mute out. tree? Yeah. Mute tree. Here, let me. Is that better? Hello? TJ. I'm still here. Oh. You guys are here. Yeah. What I was going to say. I, you... I keep hearing. Little noises here and there, so. Did, is it better now? I just turned off Tree's mic. Hey, I, I have a so. I have a question for KTO really quickly. There's I I is Bernie Kozar's uh, alcoholism like off limits? Or do people get sensitive about people making fun of Bernie Kozar and like substances and stuff in Cleveland? I think so. I think everyone's sensitive about anything that was good at one point. So <laughs> I, mean, I think that's just how it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> when you got only a few things to grasp onto that were good at one point, and Bernie Kosar is one of those. You know what I mean? Right. I, I think you should do a video of KTO on Bernie Kosar and the relationship with his dad. That was insane what his dad did to him. Do, do you know the story? Yeah, I, I would uh, I would have to look up. I don't know much about I, – I, I know um, I know about Bernie Kosar and him playing, but, yeah, I don't know much about him and his dad's relationship. So you should look this up. So his dad was, like, a thief, basically. Like, wow. And Bernie worked his whole life and, you know, like, gave his dad money and his dad, like, treated him like shit and told him, you know, like, you're, you're – you're a shitty quarterback and you're a shitty person and like like Bernie's like scarred for life from it like he's he's emotionally Damn. still angry about it and the only way that he was able to escape his dad was his dad dying like that's how horrible of a tale it is like you you should definitely like if you want to have like a depressing like <laughs> like this is bullshit like story to look up like and make that turn that into a video i would i'd watch i'd give you 14 minutes of watch time for that yeah it's a uh it's a it's a friday night light story not the happy-go-lucky tv series of friday night lights the dark Bo billy bob thornton movie version of friday night lights with like, all the alcoholism and 
kids getting I, hit and stuff like that. It kind of reminds me of Todd Moranovich or Moranovich or whatever from USC. Have oh you seen yeah, that thirty for thirty. It's it's insane. His dad was like stretch like stretching him when he was a baby, like trying to make him into the perfect athlete, and he just like ruined his life trying to make this kid into like a robot, basically. And it's a, it's a really good thirty for thirty. That he was doing sense. well there for a little while, and then he relapsed. Maybe I don't know, like six, seven months ago, and then I think he's back in Damn. prison now. Wow. Marinovich? Yeah, that guy's had a, a rough go of things. Yeah, he his nickname in high school was Todd Marijuanovich. That's what they called yeah. him. They would chant that in the crowd during his basketball games. Yeah, and or I some, he, some I along those lines. I think he got arrested totally naked, like yes. uh, on a bunch of drugs in somebody's backyard. Wow. And he was like he couldn't get out. Like he got trapped in somebody's backyard and so they just called the cops and arrested him. Yeah, he, he had some probation violations here as well. Uh, that was this year in March. So he's he's like back in jail, man. That guy that guy's troubled, you know. Yeah. Thank, thank God my addictions consist of food and a paycheck. That's those are my <laughs> two biggest uh, addictions. <laughs> is my stupid day job and health insurance. I keep um, forgetting that the rest of you don't have legal marijuana, so it's kind of a touchy. I, I do. I do. We're, oh, California. Well, we're, Oh, you're in Cal. Okay, all right. I keep thinking you're in Cleveland, which I kudos <laughs> I, to you for rooting for Cleveland from California. I guess it's charity. It's so how do the dispensaries yeah. work in California now? Because when I was out there, like you, it wasn't like fully legal at the time. Do, is it There's just a couple of uh, pop up like shops? Like it, it almost feels like a a doctor's office. You walk in and they got like the booth with like the glass, and you step up to it and they give you like a a clipboard with like the spill out thing. And then you turn it in and you sit in like this waiting office and then they bring you into the back room. But yeah, I mean, I don't know how they do it anywhere else, but I mean, it's, it's pretty legit. De Denver is amazing. You just walk in and then you get behind the glass and then, I mean. Yeah, there's two lines. There's uh, like medical and then there's recreational. You go to whatever. And then there's a whole back room with like the glass first... cases of, of I just, whatever I just, want. I love that phrase. It's pretty legit uh, because <laughs> it's something legitimate. That's the absolute worst phrase you could possibly yeah. use to legit. <laughs> right, right. It's yeah, ambiguously right. legal, right? And, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. No, the first that's how time. All the dispensaries though are everywhere. It, that's the way you describe. That's perfectly the way you describe it. It's pretty legit because yeah. they're all that way. Because you have to go to some through some door for no reason. Well. It they feels weird it. the first time you go through it. it. It doesn't feel like you're supposed to be there. Right. Yeah. You feel like you're doing something wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That, that, the dispensary and a strip club, both places, you're just like, this is, I, I shouldn't be here. Well, like I'm sitting on the couch in this dispensary and the lady next to me has got like an oxygen tank and about to die. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Am I supposed to be here? And I'm, <laughs> I'm about to leave because it's like, what is this place? Right. It's the only place where like. People on on a iron in an iron lung and a pot like someone just trying to get high like meet up like you're not gonna meet up at a infusion room at a cancer center and just be like let's hang. Yeah. It know? is a weird group of people that you run into at a dispensary. It's true. You see someone like in a business suit and they're just like, <laughs> yeah, uh huh, me too, motherfucker. If, if you show up in more than like sweats and like a baseball hat, like you're a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. You have a tie on, sir. Uh, what What are you doing here? Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. You walked into the wrong building if you have more than sweatpants on. So you have what, slacks on, leave. What's funny, <laughs> TJ, is when I say pretty legit. Like DC has dispensaries, okay, and they are not totally legit. So <laughs> it's very ambiguous to what the laws are in DC and what yeah. you're supposed to be able to. Do so. There are dispensaries everywhere, but they're technically illegal. But there's so many of them, they can't stop it. And if you leave DC, you're on camera. Like they, trust me. In every major city, is has every inch of it is on camera. And if you, it, yeah, wow, it's just like an airport though. Like don't be a dick. Like don't take eight pounds of weed on a plane. Don't take twenty <laughs> pounds of weed out of yeah. DC. Like leave with your joint and go home and you know 
Uh, let's get these uh, Snapchats. <laughs> I call them Snap. They're snoo- super chats, but that's KTO. That's the new thing. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. <laughs> A lot of chatter about Bernie Kosar's daughter being a porn star. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm interested. I'm not Googling that with my browser yeah. over here. Um, <laughs> anyway, Henry <laughs> O'Brien, what do you think the Pens do in the offseason? Uh, I think definitely they're going to get rid of dump cap or dump salaries. And then James Amadai, Tree, when are you going to do Notre Dame football? Tree is currently muted let's let's see what the situation with tree is if he's still in a restaurant getting sloshed tree i mean i'm still here oh you're here now i've been like popping in and out oh okay you've been saying stuff the whole time because i've because i've had you muted (laughs) every now and again (laughs) i do that at home i talk to walls it's all good yeah all right well i think we got five minutes left tj do you have any questions for karsten um well yeah i just at this point it's just why are you i think that's my only question at this point. <laughs> well uh i actually made a, a video about it in like a q a video but it, it's the dumbest reason of all time it's I, I was three years old or four years old and i drew like pictures like i like to draw like that before i could write and i loved football at the time like i would when i would watch a game it would be like a, a blue team and a red team, and I would choose a team, and I would care so much about like the red team. If they lost, I'd like cry about it. That's how upset I'd get. Damn, but the, the whole thing was I, I liked. I figured out how to draw football helmets reasonably well for like a like a four year old, and easiest helmet to draw is the the Cleveland Browns. So <laughs> I have like my mom has like pictures of me when I'm like four, like holding up like a. A, like a cardboard cutout of like a orange helmet, and I've been ride or die ever since. Damn, son! <laughs> Just because of the color brown, right now. Now, if simplicity you were on a- of uniform. That's the best reason to ever pick a team <laughs> uh, as a child. That is and, the best. And the thing about it is, they don't even have like good-looking uniforms. Like you could argue as a kid, if like you saw brown and white, you'd be like. That's the worst uniform you've ever seen. Like, why would you be attracted to that uniform? It doesn't make any sense. So, I, yeah. I had this old tin tin lunchbox that had every NFL logo on it. I always thought the Steelers logo was the coolest. But Steelers is cool, I'll admit. Yeah. yeah the, the Browns is pretty lame. Yeah. Uh, Tree, do you have any parting words? No, sir. No, sir. Not at all, my man. I'm just... Sitting on a bench, enjoying the Baltimore light life. Nothing Look, too crazy, my man. Looking like a creep, just on a live stream, just sitting on a bench, huh? Yep, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I look like a creep everywhere I go. Look at me. I'm terrible looking. <laughs> yeah, that's that's because you could wax your head with bowling polish, and and it would make you look shinier. Yes, it would be great. It would be wonderful. <laughs> we know how this is, man. Uh, TJ, any parting shots? Any shout outs for Phantom? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I just have to say I have a lot of respect. I love everybody, uh, everybody's content who's who's on here right now. Uh, KTO, uh, Tree, um, Adam, you two, everybody who's on here. The Phantom is all about bringing people like this together to create stuff because I believe that this is like the future of sports media. So, uh, Congratulations to all of you gentlemen on being uh, being here for that. Thank, uh, you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. I appreciate it. Yeah, as, as Karsten, when you sent me a DM, he's, he's like, we're all winning at this point. I'm like, yeah, shit, yeah, we're winning. Like, you, you Oh, yeah, after lose. you reach a certain point, you're, you're set. You just yeah. got to keep doing what you do. Yeah, well, uh, you got any final words there before we sign off, KTO? I mean, what I want to talk about will just lead to other conversations, and it's just it's just talking sports forever. So, I'm I'm probably good. All right. Yeah. So. <laughs> I like your honesty there. Um, here, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let uh, Fly Latori come in and ask a question. We have uh, subs of the stream, and uh, we let them come in here. Fly Tori, you got one minute. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay. Um. <laughs> Don't blow it. <laughs> Reverse tweet. Oh, Sorry, you're on with 
three huge YouTubers and well, I wouldn't say huge, three above average YouTubers and TJ. <laughs> Uh, River sweep, delete your franchise. All right, that that cracked me up. Too. All right, that's fun. that was great. All right, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. We did an hour of time. It was wonderful. Thanks KTO for joining us. Thank you TJ for co-hosting. Thank you Urinating Tree for all the background noise. You fucker. Uh, um, is that right? Yeah, it's right. ambient, ambient sounds. Yep. And that's the ambient. sound term. That's right. It's it's atmosphere. That's right. The sound of all the poor Ravens yes. fans. That's right. Sound of Baltimore. Sound of Baltimore. Or the all those poor Orioles. All right. I'm <laughs> I'm five points vids and you made it to the end of this stream. Thank you. <laughs>